I might say Pastor Jeff is not being antisocial. He has a bad cold, so didn't want to shake hands with folks. Uh, we're looking at a passage this morning from the 13th chapter of Romans. Romans is the only letter that Paul did not, uh, that Paul wrote to a church which he did not establish, a church in which he was not known personally. Uh, the letter was most likely written in the late 50s, about 58 AD, while Paul was in Corinth preparing for his last trip to Jerusalem. In this letter, Paul does not have to deal with issues plaguing a local church as he does in several of his letters, settle this argument, stop this, and so on. Instead, he's writing to introduce himself and explain the gospel he's been preaching. The letter is sometimes called more systematic than his other letters. The church at Rome had a strong Jewish contingent, and Paul spends time in this letter discussing how Christianity has superseded Judaism. The letter was a keystone for theologians from Augustine to Martin Luther as they worked out the distinction between law and grace. In our passage today, Paul addresses the question of the second coming of Jesus. Uh, Jesus said he would come again. We do have to remember, though, that Paul and his readers had not read the Gospels. In the late 50s AD, the Gospels that we have had not yet been written. There do seem to have been collections of Jesus' sayings in circulation. Uh, Luke refers to such things at the beginning of his Gospel. Uh, and Jesus' teachings would have been shared orally by his original disciples. So the idea that Jesus was going to return was known to the first Christians. But when? That's the question. We see the urgency of that question in the first letter to the Thessalonians. In 1 Thessalonians 5, Paul uses language quite similar to what he uses here to encourage that church not to sleep. He says, we belong to the day. Now, ancient cities did not have street lights or police forces, so night was a dangerous time. Uh, the streets belonged to criminals and those engaged in unsavory activities. The Roman poet Juvenal says a person was a fool to go out at night without making a will. Uh, Nero, who was emperor in Paul's day, liked to go out in disguise with a few soldiers trailing him, and he would attack anyone who was unfortunate enough to have to be out after dark. He gave up that little hobby, though, when one man fought back and beat him senseless. <clears throat> Paul is using imagery here about night and day that would resonate with his readers. This dangerous, unhappy time, the night is almost over. We need to be awake and ready for the day. So let's read the passage now as it appears in your bulletin or in your pew Bible. And do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. <clears throat> let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. This is the word of the Lord. 